with your permission, I will uh, draw uh, two little Lacanian diagrams. I belong to a category of others, in fact, French or uh, Francophile or Franco. Uh, Franco <laughs> Uh, uh, philosophers uh, who are not Lacanians, they are official Lacanians. And I belong to another category that is somebody who is not a Lacanian, because all my life I've been struggling with that. I can't, of course, I heard him when I was a student. And uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, when he spoke, although he was famous for his very uh, esoteric, uh, elliptic, and uh, way of speaking, uh, it was much clearer than when you try and read him. Than the transcriptions of the text, yes. Because, because, something to do with what I was talking about, not only because, because, not only because he was eloquent, but because there was a dynamic movement, if you like, in the oral speech that somehow re established the hierarchy among uh, the syntactic hierarchy among the uh, words and signifiers without which you cannot understand what somebody wants to say. So, but in any case, uh, as I said, I traveled uh, all my life with some of these ideas, but there are a few uh, instruments, I would say, formal instruments, which uh, I uh, repeatedly come back to. And uh, uh, one of them is not the Main one, of course, is the well known Borromean, the so called Borromean knot. Now, uh, what I would present here is not exactly a Borromean knot because uh, it's just a Pierce uh, diagram of three uh, uh, intersecting uh, uh, circles or sounds. The actual Borromean knot, as you probably know, and it's very easy to, 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 to make, is a, is, a, is a conjunction of three uh, circles or uh, was, of course, uh, um, which are intertwined uh, in such a manner as if any one of them is cut or made loose, the whole thing falls apart. Uh, so if each of them binds the other two or, or keeps them uh, together. This is uh, no topological, uh, of course, uh, no way to discover figure of shape, and it's called like that, as you perhaps know, because the, the, the knot, so you have to imagine that uh, the first is like this, and then the second overlaps uh, on one side, and, and then uh, is uh, uh, under the first uh, then, and then the third one does the same, which you need in each and every of them. So I should know how to make it. So this, uh, uh, is uh, called Borromean knot because it features uh, famously on the arms, the feet, or uh, you say arms, uh, uh, of the uh, very, very ancient uh, aristocratic uh, family from northern Italy, Italy uh, the Borromei, uh, the ones who had bows and dunes and all that. Uh, and who uh, in particular uh, built the unbelievable uh, uh, castle in the lake uh, Lago Maggiore in northern Italy called uh, uh, Isola. Isola is not. Okay, so the uh, Borromean knot, uh, uh, which I draw in a slightly uh, simplified manner, <coughs> is made of three circles each of which is mediating, I would say, or, or connecting the other. 
And as I count, uh, when he introduced this, uh, this uh, um, representation, this uh, can be used to uh, speculate and reflect on uh, um, ontological uh, properties, there's no other way uh, than that, of systems uh, or uh, structures which are not, that's the important point, which are not dualistic, as many of our traditional uh, uh, ontological structures are. Form and matter, subject and object, real and virtual, we seem to be completely unable to move outside uh, such a uh, physics. Of course, you want to be, if you want, can you follow me? If you want to be critical of this kind of uh, ontology or in other uh, terminologies that I take them to be more synonymous with this semantic. Uh, um, universals uh, or transcendental uh, forms of reflection, there are different ways of, of, of doing it. Uh, to remain, I apologize for that, within the French contemporary tradition, which I never, never call French theory. I absolutely hate this. Uh, <laughs> this uh, it's philosophy. So if you remain within this, uh, this tradition, uh, you have the Derridian way of, of, of doing it. Uh, the Derridian way called deconstruction, to put it in a very simple way, I use it at the end of my uh, paper, means that you take uh, certain binaries or certain uh, uh, antithesis, uh, which uh, again is supposed to be uh, ultimate or impossible to, to, to dismiss, to overcome, and you start. Uh, uh, Showing not only that they are indeterminable uh, uh, and certain that they do in my uh, uh, paper, but that they are impossible, uh, impossible, because in fact they implicitly and inevitably at some point reveal, reveal uh, uh, something like a second, that it has a, something that is in excess, an element without which they would not. Uh, uh, work, but which in fact destroy or disturbs their uh, um, uh, beautiful symmetry. In, in Lacan's case, of course, he's not a deconstructor. He's in a sense exactly the, the, uh, the opposite. Um, the um, method takes the form of imposing, and of course this also has a long uh, speculative tradition behind itself, uh, another uh, kind of uh, um, semantics or, or uh, 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 ontology, which uh, right from the beginning is ternary, is ternary. Of course, uh, well, that's a long story. We might say there is a theological background behind that, except that, uh, uh, yes, of course, I mean, our God in the Christian tradition is a, is a, is a trinity, so it must have something to do with that, but do that something. And in Lacan's famous presentation, that's the ontological dimension he's giving to it, uh, the three uh, um, realms, these are realms, or uh, codes, if you like, uh, uh, are uh, called respectively the real, the imaginary, and the symbolic, in whichever order. This is interesting because at the beginning, Lacan apparently and establish a kind of absolute primacy of the symbolic in the form of the, uh, the thesis or the declaration. The symbolic order is made of signifiers, the typical, the, the root for all that is language uh, itself. And outside, of course, the codes uh, and the practice of language, and therefore the symbolic as, as such, or the uh, assemblage of, of signifiers, there is nothing to be either seen or thought and so but then it became uh, interestingly more uh, uh, now forgive this if you can um, i uh, uh, started to notice at some point that i had 
an irresistible tendency to uh, work with uh, triplets, if you like, of uh, And today we have to do with two of them. Uh, of course, uh, one is uh, explicitly there in the title of my paper on uh, Days years ago, British um, Association, British Association, so that leaving aside real symbolic and imaginary because drawing direct correspondences would be something uh, uh, in, in, in impossible, uh, I might say that uh, the object of this paper, formally speaking, very, very formally leaving aside what perhaps makes all the interest what I tried to discuss that is political matters, ethical matters, absolutely uh, uh, matters as well. Uh, this is again a kind of Borromean uh, uh, not uh, equal liberty as a political and juridical principle, anthropological difference as a philosophical problem and <laughs> this is total an anthropological one and uh, uh, um, uh, ontological difference as a, a way of indicating how on the tracks of Heidegger and beyond Heidegger, perhaps to the head of Heidegger, we can try and move from an ontology of substances which still heavily dominate substances and property, of course, the, the center of the uh, traditional ontology which Derrida never ceases to attack is the idea that something has to be properly what it is. It becomes appropriated to itself, and for that reason, appropriable for also by uh, 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 others. So, moving from there to the so called ontology of relations, which proves, of course, to be a difficult question. Now, uh, um, uh, the only thing I want to say now, because we'll come to that in the questions that can be prepared. And, uh, a lot of, uh, I hope, questions to answer, for which I'm not sure I have the answer. That's not a, a problem for me, it might be a problem for uh, a workshop which uh, aims at delivering some uh, uh, results. But the, the other uh, uh, thing that I want to draw from this, and it comes to my mind immediately, of course, when looking at the title of that. Uh, uh, so I uh, and her colleagues have given to this uh, to this uh, uh, to this workshop is the fact that we again have three versions: translation, hospitality, translation, hospitality, and equality. Let's write it like that for the time being between uh, words. Maybe at some point I have. The minute I have the possibility to return to the uh, etymology and the reasons why I coined this uh, portmanteau. Uh, uh, is that a Borromean knot? Uh, that would be my first uh, formal question. And in which sense? If we keep the same, uh, uh, same uh, uh, principle that I uh, proposed a minute ago, uh, it would mean something like uh, each of these three notions or perhaps questions in the form of notions is necessary in order to articulate the other two. So uh, we cannot talk about translation and hospitality, articulate translation and hospitality, without a notion like polygamy. And we can continue with the same day. Now, what's the uh, sake of that? What's the interest of that? Um, I, I, I think I can say two things about that. Um, um, first of all, of course, what comes to my mind is the fact that Soraya and her colleagues have set up a wonderful program, which has a very uh, long and also uh, remarkable title. Somewhere we call a project called Cosmopolitanism, Justice, Democracy, and Citizenship. The border, border triplet. I know 
Krishna for intentions. So, so the idea that comes to our mind is that he wants us and me in particular to talk about these three notions because she believes that their articulation is crucial to understand what the idea of cosmopolitan can be. Or perhaps, to uh, put it slightly differently, given the tensions that ever since this word was invented in, by the Greeks, another problem, uh, I mean, cosmopolitanism or cosmopolitan, uh, uh, such a, an articulation of three clouds might be necessary in order to elucidate what is at stake in these tensions. Remarkably, of course, there never was in any period of an atrocious, said that several times, a single notion of cosmopolitanism or the cosmopolitical subject. This was always there in the form of uh, at least, uh, at least a conflict or an antithesis between uh, two rival, I would say, understandings and perhaps more. Examples for that, uh, if we return to the, to the brief, the originary clash or difference between the stoic concept of cosmopolitanism and the, um, the, the cynic, uh, cynical concept of cosmopolitanism, one of which has to do with, I would say, conservative and the imperial, potentially imperial representation of the unity of the world, its inheritance, and the other one having to do with reason why it's fascinating, fascinating to go in the last four or five life with a, 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 a negative, an anarchist uh, position, where to declare I'm a citizen of the world uh, uh, exactly means I'm not a citizen of this or that city, nation, if you prefer, state within which you want to be. Then when you come to the modern times and the idea of cosmopolitanism is resurrected, as you know, some is more uh, on this than me, uh, but uh, on this at least I agree we agree. We spoke about that uh, some time ago. Uh, uh, you have a very interesting tension between, I would say, two plus one uh, uh, notions of cosmopolitanism. You have the Kantian notion, of course, of use, cosmo. Cosmopolitan which, well, yeah, well, two groups in fact, uh, 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 which is centered on the uh, on the notion of hospitality or a certain uh, understanding and valorization of the notion of uh, hospitality, uh, uh, which uh, was taken uh, again, taken up again by. Contemporary philosophers, and once again, the other day, one of them is not the only one. Uh, he focused a certain discussion because he advanced the idea of unconditional hospitality, which a uh, lot uh, of people deem to be uh, not uh, impossible, uh, not desirable, which we trust actually seems to indicate that Kant's notion of hospitality was itself conditional rather than unconditional, something which is not. Uh, appear at all. And then, so yeah, yeah, please uh, correct me as soon as I say something wrong, uh, uh, is the uh, uh, antithetic uh, uh, understanding that was proposed, in fact, in the same period, later by the, the, by the Humboldt, and not twins, uh, uh, the Humboldts, uh, uh, the two brothers, uh, uh, Alexander, and uh, him, um, who, for the sake of this uh, short presentation, we take as uh, early as three uh, figures, as their uh, complementary sides of one of the same, one and the same uh, idea. But what is that idea? That's an idea which has to do, of course, with the valorizing the uh, multiplicity of human language and human culture themselves understood something very uh, as forms of the uh, relationship of the human with respect to or towards uh, its, uh, its uh, environment. Of course, what is uh, paradoxically, uh, 
higher right in the, in the communist perspective is the very idea of multiplicity. The idea of multiplicity, and particularly the reason why Humboldt has, the Humboldt others have been so influential in the whole anthropological tradition that includes uh, Boas, uh, uh, and uh, others, the uh, anti evolutionist, uh, evolutionist uh, idea that uh, in fact there is no such a thing as a, a linear uh, process of evolution, uh, meaning that uh, some cultures provide the standard both for the understanding and the valorization of uh, uh, others. Of course, theoretically, that standard culture is the Western European. So uh, this might be uh, perhaps uh, uh, quickly summarized in the form of uh, a, 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 a bringing through the bringing into the not a neologism but the uh, the uh, um, uh, bizarre say, uh, counter signifier. Uh, was. Uh, Invented, uh, I'm not entirely sure of that, but during the same uh, period by the great German novelist, <laughs> multiversal, and uh, was, uh, of course, is now of wide uh, use, but it's of wide use in uh, in multiversal, uh, uh, wide use uh, by different types of uh, theorists, uh, discourses on one side, cosmologists. You know, like Theoretically, subsumed under a single discussion or, or uh, organized according to a single standard, what we call the universe is back to the multiverse. But then uh, um, uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, calls for a, uh, perhaps in addition to, to the two, the third one which is marked, uh, which is marked uh, and more generally the uh, the uh, tradition, uh, the socialist tradition, the socialist and communist tradition of the 19th, 20th century, will it ask in the 21st? It's an interesting question. And as you know, uh, 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 Marx's uh, brand of cosmopolitanism, which does, uh, uh, of course, owes something to the others, if only in the form of reaction to them, it's called internationalism. Which uh, even sometimes, uh, well, Italian, he didn't coin it, internationalism. So, the important uh, element here uh, uh, being uh, uh, perhaps that uh, uh, if Kant's uh, uh, idea of hospitality or, or is uh, um, a theological one which uh, uh, aims at the realization in history or in human society. A certain idea or ideal. And uh, um, uh, uh, the Humboldts, who have a very strong Magnitian background, as they do later, uh, of course, are very guided by the uh, uh, idea of a certain harmony that the world, the multiplicity of the world, represents. Of course, in the case of Marx, the central idea is country. And, 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 and now, from all this, I uh, derive, and I will stop there for the problems too much, I derive the uh, 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 assumption, the, uh, the uh, hypothesis that uh, uh, the reason why Soraya put the three terms was that she wanted to once again to problematize the she wanted to problematize the the, 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 the question of uh, um, uh, cosmopolitanism, not just to, of course, not to simply 
achieve or produce a, a, a formal definition that will finally put an end, if you like, to the definition uh, of the conflict or divergence. Rather, of course, and that's the very state of the idea of problematizing or problematization to understand what is at stake in their uh, uh, positions and why they uh, cannot becomes uh, uh, used to one another. A kind of uh, apparatic way of doing theory of history, which uh, some people like very much uh, and others hate, uh, of course, because it, uh, it doesn't seem to reach the kind of uh, uh, workable and usable conclusions that, uh, that uh, are expected. But then it seems to me that she had another uh, that she had another uh, to do that, which is that the history of ideas is okay. The history of ideas is important about that. Reading the text and uh, putting them in the right uh, historical framework is always very useful. But it's more uh, important, uh, uh, in a sense, to get closer, I would say, to the core of the eporias or even the antinomies that lie at the heart of a certain. Uh, uh, a crucial idea or category. And in that case, if you remember, that's my guess. I guess I'm trying to send her an inverted message to see if she agrees with that. Um, my guess is that um, the theoretical issue at stake is universality. universality. Is the, the form in which, the ways in which uh, today, we deal with the question of, of universality. And of course, what is interesting here is the fact, uh, one, that uh, uh, conflict about universality, universalism, to whether to reject it or to adopt it, but above all, of course, how to understand it and use it is central in many debates in this world. It questions Europe's self awareness or self understanding of its own history. Yeah. It sometimes seems to confront the European uh, tradition and language of which we are part uh, here, of course, to something like an all or nothing uh, uh, mentality. Either because the European idea of universality is uh, completely. Uh, Say uh, co um, compromised I mean, uh, uh, with Eurocentrism and therefore through Eurocentrism and and, uh, and imperialism and uh, imperialism itself and therefore the uh, radical devalorization and misunderstanding uh, of other cultures that you can call racism theory sense of the term, the only possibility, the only possibility to uh, um, um, engage the other, let me say, is to drop the idea of universality. But then, of course, when you talk to the other, those who speak in the name of the others, you dis discover sometimes, not always, not always, you discover sometimes that their point of view is not to call for the uh, destruction or uh, uh, abandonment uh, uh, of the idea of the universal. It's rather to call for a radical transformation of our understanding and use of that uh, category. So disentanglement so of Eurocentrism and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and universalism. In this strategy, uh, there are many differences, of course. Kant and Marx are probably the most Eurocentric of the three, which might be uh, uh, discussed. And then, of course, you get to the, I, I suggest, you get to the uh, uh, idea that uh, what we need in the most literal sense of the term, even if I seem to be quoting the other, again, is the deconstruction of the idea of universalism or the universal as. Uh, cultural and political uh, uh, motto. What are its components and how are they, how are they 
combined uh, uh, together. And it's here, of course, that the tribal view uh, uh, becomes, uh, uh, becomes interesting. Um, the case, uh, and, 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 and again, I would repeat the Borromean motto, you cannot make use of any two of them without including the, uh, uh, the third. And you might believe that this is a way to justify my uh, coinage and introduction to uh, a small uh, uh, formula uh, uh, equality. But that's not, uh, I hope, is entirely. Now, all three of them are totally problematic. And I'll finish with that. Uh, hospitality is problematic, uh, and that's the virtue, I believe, of uh, uh, Derrida's radical uh, formulation, unconditional hospitality, which I take to be meaningful if you hear it not uh, uh, in some indeterminate intellectual atmosphere, as if we were dealing with the idea of hospitality per se, but it's in a given conjuncture. The conjecture in which we are, especially in Europe today, just look at Lesbos uh, this morning or is uh, an hour, an hour after coming, is not a, a situation in which you ask, abstractly uh, speaking, whether an unconditional hospitality could be possible. It's a situation in which you face a claim of hospitality which is not only conditional. But in fact, reverts into uh, a very violent view in, in hospitality. So that you have to uh, 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 negate the, 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 the negation. But the core of that is something that comes from Kant. Because, of course, Kant puts severe limitations on his concept. He was, in fact, a Severe limitations on his concept of hospitality. By, uh, uh, in particular, uh, explaining the famous formula that the right uh, of hospitality should be limited to visiting the other uh, uh, people's country, which is not the same, of course, as settling uh, uh, there as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as an immigrant. But at the core of his uh, uh, formula is a formula, as uh, is discussed, the formula that I find more than ever absolutely crucial idea. Therefore, I have no difficulties in uh, aiming to the attention from this point of view, which is the uh, uh, injunction not to treat the foreigner or the stranger, the stranger or the foreigner, as an enemy. You will live today in a situation in which increasingly the foreigner or some foreigner, certain foreigners, are automatically treated as an enemy. Even in an anti-every manner, which shows how relevant the, 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 the this is. Now, more rapidly, of course, the question with translation, translation is, I believe, double. I believe double. It's double because, uh, um, uh, on the one hand, um, uh, you cannot avoid the question. Uh, there are increasingly many discourses which explain that. Uh, Traditional universalism, Eurocentrism, it was bound with colonization. Perhaps the French, especially typical of that, and more than the British, British colonialism, it's hard on the French, too, of course. But the, the French, as we, as, we, as we know, because they have proclaimed the declaration, the universal declaration of Man and the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, which is typically a universalistic uh, text, uh, thought of themselves, the keep thinking of themselves to an incredible uh, 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 degree uh, uh, as the inventors of the modern and enlightened idea of the universal, and therefore, so called this private owner, uh, which is in, in, in terms of. Uh, Course. The, so against this uh, uh, homogenizing and uh, violently unif uniform, unifying uh, representation of the universal, there's a broad tendency to which many of us have contributed, which uh, has uh, interesting 
being uh, overlapped, uh, overlapping with uh, postcolonialism or certain forms of postcolonialism, I think you know, Omi Baba, Lokhedi Pashas, uh, and uh, others whom we could uh, mention, which uh, aims at uh, uh, introducing not only an idea, the idea of a universal, made of its own internal history, in a broad, in a broad uh, sense. So, um, but uh, uh, a universal that is uh, uh, achieved as a people or produced through the labor of translation. And the labor of translation, not only as much as it uh, connects or binds together different uh, languages and uh, universes, and therefore makes them more or less. Uh, uh, not never interchangeable, communicable, but above all the Benjaminian idea that the process of translation is not a, is, is always a, a, at the same time a process of transformation of the languages themselves. So the, the, the one, uh, the first, and the, above all, the second, into which something is, trans, is uh, uh, translated. Now, this is very nice. Uh, this is very nice, and I like that, and I dear to that very uh, uh, strongly, but it, it has several intrinsic problems. One of them being, uh, uh, how do we translate the very word, the very expression universal, universal into other non-Latin uh, uh, languages? And I think, I believe this is an intriguingly important uh, issue. And the second, of course, uh, uh, being how do we combine, not to say reconcile, not to say reconcile, we say the, uh, the, the peaceful element, the idea that translation is a privileged uh, practice of recognition, of mutual uh, recognition, with the fact that cultures and languages in today's world and for not forever, but for a long uh, uh, time, never, never, are uh, uh, in a relationship of equality, and not in part. So they are uh, uh, relations of conflictual, and they always involve different forms of domination. So that if you, the, 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 the harmony, if there is one, it's not a prerequisite. What is the prerequisite is a different country. It can only be a problematic, uh, Problematic, uh, uh, point and that's where, of course, perhaps into looking into both directions, the notion like uh, uh, equal liberty can become of some uh, uh, interest. Theoretically uh, speaking, or repeating what I had said before, you're not about to combine. Uh, these are two very different ideas the universalism of differences in translation. Say, and you did the universalism of more or less unconditional universality, universality, which I think it means that uh, uh, by all by all means we preserve the vital element existence of strangeness or foreignness in our cultures, while at the same time continuously rejecting the transformation of the foreigner of the stranger. To, to, to now, of course, equal liberty is a more private of my point. There were two sources for that, um, uh, logically speaking. And it was, in a sense, the collapsing of the two that gave me this uh, yeah, well, sorry, it was. The first is that there is a long line, which I'm tempted to call constitutional history of political discourse in the West, so Roman essentially, post-Roman and Latin culture, which make use of that binary. So that, of course, derives from fundamental categories of Roman law, or better, Roman public law, ecum use, or uh, in uh, or equal libertas, uh, which is Cicero and others, and 
all the way uh, <laughs> out, it reaches uh, um, oh, many names, uh, uh, great uh, American uh, 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 theorists of this. Ross, Ross, which is Ross, who makes a, an explicit, makes an explicit uh, uh, use of the The more I was reading him, with some effort, because he's not really funny in that case, so the more I was reading him, the more I was uh, surprised, and I thought of that this is not pretty different from the of course, but the fact that uh, uh, what he wanted to explicitly base on the uh, use of this, uh, of this formula was the idea that he must, at all costs, establish a hierarchy between the two values or the two uh, categories because the situation is such that he can always uh, give up or uh, drop some of your demands on equality, but never your demands on liberty. Because if you destroy liberty, you will not have equality. Whereas if you destroy equality, more or less, you will keep liberty, which I think is totally wrong. So, especially, uh, <laughs> obviously, wrong in our contemporary situation. So, what is uh, interesting in a sense, and it produced the uh, it was the fact that at the same time uh, I was rereading the text from the English Revolution, particularly the level of the last and he said the level. Uh, but among the uh, tracks of the levelers, uh, a friend of mine, a German friend of mine, uh, found a, a text where equal liberty written with two F's, equal liberty. Uh, Teachers sent uh, the and the party and so on. And there, of course, the symmetry is absolute. The symmetry is absolute. That is the idea that I uh, developed as a, as a motto, as an in injunction. What we are claiming is not liberty without equality, but we are also not claiming equality without liberty. We are claiming both, despite the fact, which is of course central, that they can and perhaps must clash or be. Intention with one and, 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 and another. So, this is not the constitutional idea, but this is the insurrectional idea. Of course, the insurrectional idea is not one describes an established fact. It doesn't say, look around you, wherever you see liberty uh, or forms of liberty, you also find forms of liberty, and conversely, it says something like you can never escape. This uh, 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 question. But of course, we think it less and less if what you have in mind is not just the question of equality of formal rights or uh, statuses, it's something which, uh, again, the contemporary English, it speaks English in many cases, it's difficult to translate it because the language of emancipatory movements has repeatedly. Many views of namely the idea of empowerment or the idea of uh, collective agency. But some philosophers, uh, like Spinoza, for example, on whom I've been working for a uh, few time, have uh, a very direct experience uh, of that. The idea of liberty is not just that you enjoy rights. Somebody wants to ask me questions about our relationship to Ireland. So, but uh, uh, it's the uh, idea, of course, of creating collectively uh, uh, one's own individual rights in this, uh, in this space, in as much, of course, as you uh, enter or embark on some kind of insurrection in the broadest. So I don't really resolve anything, but I am strongly tempted to project uh, uh, on future ideas. Of course, we cannot find ourselves 
enslaved by that. The idea that her three notions of which one can't agree, but not, not the others, uh, uh, come from me or through me, etc., are uh, uh, a privileged way of uh, problematizing, problematizing the uncertain articulation of three types of universality in the world in which we live. I'm sorry for that. Absurd. 